last day. It's cold. It's like 35 degrees, so we'll see what happens. They've been in the Elrod's backyard here. You can see them a couple hundred yards behind the house, but that's where they wanted to be, so we're going to give them a shot. So we'll see.
got to be fucking kidding me. Freaking kidding me. Got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> Scared him off with the gobble call. He's pushed away a little bit. If you're just tuning in, I'm sorry. I thought this guy was on a string. He gobbled in a field behind me. Close, like 50 yards. All he had to do was walk down his path. And he wouldn't do it. So I got aggressive on him. And he didn't like it. He pushed off. So I wish I had a partner here. I'd move on him, because I know he ain't far, I know exactly where he's at in this clover field behind me, but it's a risky move for the one-man operation, so we'll see what we can do here.
first thing this morning. You know, I talked myself out of it because they've been in this short grass the last couple weeks. I was like, nah, just sitting up in the short grass, wait them out. Sure freaking thing, that dude came right where I was going to set up. And I couldn't pull him down here, and I just got impatient. I screwed myself on that one. five feet from me. Moved to the other side of the farm. But as fired up as that thing was, I thought for sure he'd just come charging in the other car. you feel it in your chest when you gobbles. That's how close he was. <laughs> Maybe I'll get over on that other hill. See this decoy through the clear cut. Suckers covered a lot of ground, I know that. A lot quicker than I would.
two different times over here gobbled. Fingers crossed they'll team up. See this decoy. You can come up the hill to me here. It's a long shot on that. I can't believe that hand just flew off like that. Where the heck did she come from?
Chinese car sounds awesome. I bet it's really fast. I'm talking about baby. He was gonna bolt. Yes, sir. That thing was gonna bolt. Oh, my newt. Just like I said, he teamed up, came up the hill. Stone dead. He didn't like something. I had to do it. Had to do it, baby. He didn't like something. I had to take a shot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stoner, you watching this? There ain't no need to wring his neck, Stoner. You just choke him until he stops flopping. I hope that push went out, man. Yes, sir. Yes, freaking sir. Time to 
board off. Chill, bro. You good? Trying to see if anybody watched that. I don't know. I didn't get a push myself. But I thought I sent it. Rascal made me nervous, I know that. I wasn't sure, I, I thought I screwed up, man. I had him behind me, and he was gobbling at like 50 yards, and was hung up for a minute, so I got a little bit aggressive, and he just worked away, he didn't like it. Which, you know, as much as he was gobbling, I thought a little aggression, because he'd come a long way off the roost to come find me. And he was, like I said, 40, 50 yards down this little tractor trail here. Uh, so, you know, I got a little aggressive because he hung up, and I probably should have been patient and just waited him out, and he would have come in, but it's the last day of the season. Um, wife and baby at the house. The shorter time I'm out here, the better, so, um, you know, I got aggressive, gobbled at him, you know, maybe two or three too many times, probably, but, like I said, I thought he would, I thought he'd respond aggressively and come in and, you know, give me a layup, but... And then he pushed off, and I don't know if it's the same one or not. I assume it is, but I could be wrong. He pushed way off and worked down around, and you can see down the hill behind me. And he got in the other logging trail down there. And I don't know if he could see the decoy from there or what, but um, yeah, you can kind of see. Man, back that way, whatever, you don't care. Uh, you know, it opens up back there, and he might have been able to see me. And I said to the camera, I was like, if I can get this dude to see the decoy, because there are two of them that gobbled, they might team up, come up the hill, and take a look. And, uh, you know, he got to the edge of the tall grass here and, you know, was about 15 yards away and just didn't like something. Um, so, you know, rather than let him work away, I made the executive decision to punch a tag. So, um, nice turkey. Got us. He got his face blowed up a little bit. Decent beard. Decent spurs. I mean, good. A solid turkey regardless. I don't care. Last day of the season. You know, it's a nice beard. So, I'm happy. I'm thankful. The Elrods. It's a magical kingdom out here of, of turkey hunting heaven. So, you know, we're fortunate. Clay and I have been hunting out here a long time. And, uh, you know, just fortunate they still let us come 10 years after college, so, um, pretty excited. They're getting ready to go to church, so it's, it's 7 o'clock, be home by 9 o'clock, be good, good for breakfast. We, uh, let me get this thing set up here and I'll, uh, do a final closeout. <sighs> Decent, you know, he ain't, he 22, 23 pound bird maybe. I don't know, it's so hard to tell. You know, it's so hard to tell how much they weigh and at the end of the day, who cares? You know, it's a mature turkey, nice beard, decent spurs, last day of season, you know. It is what it is, guys. You're not going to not shoot a turkey just because he looks like he might be 20 pounds instead of 24. Man. He gone. Did I mention it was cold out? It's still like 35 degrees. I'm in a hoodie and a jacket. Man. 
That's what I'm talking about, baby. All right. I'm going to just stay live here. Pack my stuff up. Give me a minute. Watch me do my thing. And then we'll go from there. So. You guys probably hate me right now because that was brutal, I know. But, alright. That's the logging trail I was talking about. He just wouldn't come down it. But, it came up a hill for me, so. back up the hill for me. Yeah. Yeah, he, he didn't get, like, he, he held up at the edge of the tall grass. And he turned around, and I couldn't see the other one that was with him, so I couldn't tell what he was doing. So I didn't let him get the decoy. He's like 10 yards or 15 yards away from him, but it had to be done. So I sent push, I sent two pushes, but I know I sent it, and it said push successfully sent. Nelly M1 Super 90, getting it done. First turkey kill for this one, for me at least. Oh man, text the wife. Don't care about caller ID. All right, sweet, 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 sweet. mobile that I've had for years and years and the zinc avian x hen it's a decent combination it turns out on the last day of the season so let me get the best rundown I can here see if I can find my phone there we go nobody got pushed this stupid thing Oh well, it's on, the, it's on the app, go back and watch it, who cares, you'll see it. Um, man, let me zoom in a little bit. Sorry guys. said and done running all this stuff by yourself so today is the day after derby day I think it's the 8th 7th maybe something I don't know what is today 
7th, Sunday, May 7th. Last day of turkey season in Kentucky. And I'll punch one of two tags that we get here in Kentucky for turkeys in the spring. So, not mad about it. Um, you know, pretty nice turkey. It's been a while. Didn't kill one last year. First year since college, which would have been a long time ago that I haven't killed one. Um, tough season last year. And then this year has been tough too. You know, my farm usually usually is good for one or two turkeys. Um, just kind of hasn't been hasn't been working for us this year. So didn't hunt yesterday. Rain, crappy weather. Today is cold. Got permission to come out here to the L rods. Um, you know, it's always a blessing when you're able to come out here because it's just so beautiful and it is turkey heaven. And you know, a lot of a lot of our guys have hunted it, and everybody knows that that this is where we come when when uh, you know. When it's crunch time, we want to kill turkeys because it's just such a perfect spot. They have so many turkeys, and uh, you know we're fortunate for for permission to come out here. So, uh, like I said, I set up. You know, they've been in this short grass. You know, we're a couple hundred yards behind the house here. You guys have probably seen it in the footage. Um, and she had been sending some pictures saying, "Hey, these guys are missing their hunters." You know, and it's they're literally right behind the house, like 50 yards. So, uh, you know, so I came out here. What was it? I think it was last weekend. And uh, me and Rob Janney, a good buddy of mine, we hunted, you know, we came here and we had them coming in. And then they, uh, you know, she let the dog out or the dog scared them off. Something they all picked up and flew away. So that was the end of that. And then this morning, you know, I was kind of torn whether or not I wanted to hunt here or, you know, you can see this trail behind me. It leads to a clover field and then it's a big open, excuse me, big open field behind us. They've got two food plots back there for, for deer hunting and, uh. You know, so I set up here, walked back there, you know, turkey was gobbling down here. So, um, came back, set up here, and then, sure enough, called the turkey into right where I should have been setting up on the other side of this opening. And uh, he hung up there, and I probably screwed up and got a little too aggressive on him with the gobble call. Uh, you know, and he pushed off, but, you know, as luck would have it, he worked his way back around the other side of the farm on the other hill there teamed up with another turkey and uh, I guess he might have been able to see B mobile here I don't know because um, they came running up the hill so it just kind of you know, it worked out that way I don't know I'm fortunate for first second chance on this one but um, you know decent beard it's probably nine or ten inches you know he's got probably an inch spurs but you know I'm just just glad to be able to harvest a turkey today honestly and early enough where I can come home and uh, you know spend some quality time with the wife and my two month old baby I can say three month old in a week so um, you know haven't been able to hunt as much this year naturally but uh, you know fortunate for the opportunity like I said you know it's just it's a good feeling shooting a turkey on the last day of season especially early so I'm going to uh, wrap this up we're gonna go talk to Rick and Judy if they're in the house I'm sure they are cuz I'm sure they heard that uh, you know but we'll pack up hopefully you guys get a, a decent view of it on the app and you know we can chop it up and make a decent episode like I said you know when he let me go back here cuz it explained myself cuz I had the decoys here you know and he got to about 15 yards down here from the decoys and then turned around and I couldn't see the second one I knew the second one was there cuz I saw him coming up the hill through the weeds but I couldn't tell what the second one was doing. And when he turned around, I wasn't sure if he didn't like something or he was just checking on his buddy or what. But, you know, I wasn't going to let him go back down the hill and, and out of my life forever. So, uh, you know, I made the executive decision. I know it's not the greatest footage, but, uh, you know, it was live. It was solo, self-filmed. So, you know, if you got a problem with it, holler at me. But it'll work. I'm going to wrap it up, close out. Happy hunting, fellas. Indiana boys, make it happen. Unbelievable.
We'll go back and get some recorded footage of me uh, signing out here.